Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond. Welcome back to the podcast. Today I am very feeling very fired up to share about um, something <laughs> that has been brewing in me in the last couple of days, and it is all about women. It is time for us to fully step into our power. Um, there is levels to this shit of stepping into our power. This is something that I'm realizing <clears throat> because I feel, for the most part, pretty steps into my my own version of my full power. And yet I, I still find so much programming and so much societal programming on the outside and internal programming that's been imprinted in me on the inside it's just like levels and layers <laughs> that keep unfolding so I'm going to take you on this journey with me as I unfold them and I hope that it can empower you and what I invite all of us to do men and women I, I hope that everyone is listening to this and I know that they are so men if you're listening to this this is also for you Witness this, honor this, and share this with all the other women in your life because this is for all of us. And there is no point in only women listening to this because it takes all of us to change what has <clears throat> started by all of us. What I invite when you listen to this podcast is for you to really look at your own programming and to really look at what you want to choose as your own programming and how you want to show up in your own life. Because you can listen to this and change nothing about your life, or you can listen to this podcast and choose to have it be an opportunity and to empower you to step more into fully into your power in the way that feels good for you, in a way that feels really safe in your body. Whew. So as I start all my podcasts, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. And if you're in a space where you can close your eyes, I invite you to close your eyes and to maybe even put a hand on your belly, your below your belly button, and to breathe into your hand. So expand as you breathe in. All the way through your chest and all the way up out of your head. And at the top, hold it for a second. And then let it out. <sighs> And maybe jiggle your torso a little bit and imagine the energy coming back down through your body all the way down through your tailbone and into the ground and grounding yourself into this moment. And I invite you to take one more breath with me through your stomach and out through your head. And hold it at the top. And smile <laughs> if you want to. And then let it out. Mm. And just notice how your body is feeling in this moment. Whether you're out walking somewhere, or you're sitting quietly in nature, or you're driving. Whatever you're doing, I invite you to come into full presence with yourself and to really check in on how your body is feeling in this moment. We are spiritual creatures choosing to have a 3D experience in these bodies. And the more that we can notice and honor s the sensations happening in our bodies, the more that we can enjoy this experience. For me, I need to honor that when I was about to start this podcast, I had a lot of resistance to recording this one because I am tired of being angry. <laughs> I am tired of being tired of all of the shit that it is goes along with coming into this timeline as a woman <laughs> and I want I choose to live in joy I choose to have a timeline where I am fully in my joy and fully in the now and really enjoying every single moment as much as I can you know we got our emotions okay we up in here and also enjoying every single moment is also enjoying the moments when we're having lots of feelings whether they are positive negative sideways in between it doesn't matter fully enjoying the depths of our emotions and what does those emotions teach us because our emotions are the biggest teachers and for me I allow myself to go deep into my emotions and honor whatever comes up 
and and really soak in that and like knowing that I'm coming back to my joy so I they say like have you have you ever heard of shadow work shadow work is when you look at things that are uh subconscious so shadow work is making you know we have our conscious reality which is what our mental mind is um thinking every single day of like this is my reality I wake up into this dream and then I'm like popping around and I'm doing things and these are my beliefs this is my personality construct our subconscious is everything that we don't consciously think of on the day-to-day and our subconscious is actually made up of our belief system so it's our beliefs that got imprinted to us when we were kids specifically from the ages of zero like when you're first born to the age of three you are like a sponge Every single thing that comes into your vortex is imprinted in you because this is when your your programming is fresh, like you are ready to be programmed. So if someone loves you, you soak up that love and you're like, I am lovable. If someone does not love you, you're like, something's wrong with me because why am I not lovable? So everything, this is where, you know, whether you believe you're a good person, whether you believe you're worthy, whether you believe you can go out and do anything in the world, whether you believe you're you're not worthy, whether you believe, you know, you can't go out and do anything in the world or you have to do it in this X certain order, all of this is usually programmed to us between the ages of zero and three years old. I mean, of course, there's so much programming that happens every single day. I was watching this thing yesterday, um, (laughs) this random thing on Instagram that Prince Prince, the singer, was talking about how right now, you know, this is an old video of him, he was talking about how, like, it's a war on our minds and our programming because every single thing that we choose to take in can either uh, connect us to ourselves and our higher self or it can disconnect us from our hi- ourselves and our, our higher self, our connection to source energy. And if we feel disconnected from our source energy, then we are going to do whatever it takes to get reconnected to our source energy. Um, and so the biggest way to control people is to make you feel disconnected from yourself and your connection to source and your higher power and your higher self. So this podcast, <laughs> the reason why I had resistance to this is because, w- okay, I am tired of there not being more women leaders in the world. And the women leaders that I see, at least growing up, they were very in their masculine. They were very angry. And the way, and what I mean by being in their masculine is the way that they would take up space in the world was usually, I'm not saying everyone, but the ones that I saw growing up that were in my vortex were either women who were not leaders and just completely submissive. And I'll go into that more in a second of the way I was raised or I saw women like on TV or out in the world that were over sexualizing themselves. So using their femininity as a weapon. Um, But that's because that's really the only power that they were programmed that they had by men because men wanted sex and, or they were used, they were trying to become like men and being really loud and being very, you know, just like, we deserve to have equal rights. And I was just like, Oh, Neither of these things feel good in my body, you know? And this is not, this is, I I fully support everyone taking up space in whatever way feels good for them. So I'm not saying that this is bad. There's no right, there's no right or wrong in any of this. I'm just saying my, from my experience that I wish that there was more women leaders in the world. And right now I wish that there was more women leaders in the world that take up space in a feminine way, that take up space in a way that they can still be in their softness and still be in their joy and and receive pleasure and and feel really good in their bodies and like you know (laughs) people like me (laughs) like and I'm not saying I'm a woman leader in the world I'm saying like I want to unfold more into my full power in this way and where are the women out there that are artsy and uniquely wonderful and you know like really just speaking their truth and sharing their love with the world and resting in their joy you know and 
what I found, like, so this is what I've been brewing on for the last couple of days is that I feel that because of even right now in 2023, we have this huge societal programming that this, this, what I'm just saying right now of how like women leaders that I would love to see more of, that those are not valued in the world. That if you have that voice or, and I, I follow a lot of women leaders on Instagram and they're amazing. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm not saying that they're not out there. I'm saying I would love more of them. <laughs> I would love more of them. Like, and I've started to notice this, like in, in, in every way that I take in information, like even this morning, my boyfriend and I do breath work every morning. And there's this amazing YouTube channel called Breathwork Beats. And we listen to a, a breath work session. It's like usually 10 to 20 minutes long. So you can just do it in the morning. And I was like, why is it only men on here doing the, like leading the breath work? And I'm just like looking at every single part of my life. I'm like, where are the women leading this? Why is it not normal for that to happen? And like in my life and the way that I've chosen my timeline is I just intuitively have always created spaces for women to feel step into their power. So a couple of years ago, I lived in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It's a city in the north of Thailand. And I created a women's festival where it was completely organized and run by women. And men were totally invited to come. We, we of course, celebrated them. We wanted them to come. But I wanted to make a statement in the city that, and I had a lot of local women, foreigner women, everyone was involved. So we did uh, business talks. We did art, cr- arts and crafts. We did dancing, uh, you know, yoga, full expression. Uh, we had a whole, like... Um, food market and also like jewelry and clothing and arts and everything market as well. So like, and it was all women leaders, leaders, all women that were selling everything and um, leading the festival. So it was completely organized and run by women. And it was amazing and it was so much fun. And like, you know, I had like 10 women leading the, it with me. We had hundreds of people come and you know it got on the news and like people writing articles about it and it was like I wanted to make it as a statement like hello we can do this on our own and of course there's tons of festivals and things around the world that are run and led by women I wanted to make one here in Thailand and I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to do that and I had all the support and all the amazing women step forward and do it I also had a lot of women tell me that it was like the first time that they really put themselves out there like they like were like I want to sell something or I want to give a talk or you know like or I felt like I want to volunteer and be one of the leaders of this thing and that was so empowering for me to create that space for other women to step up and lead like I just wanted to create the space and then like have them be the ones who were taking the lead on it and what I am realizing now is that there, I really, I'm, I'm making this podcast because I want to invoke all of you guys to really look at the way that you are taking up space in your life and to ask yourself, am I taking up space in, the, in my life in the way that I want to, in the way that is fully in my power? And if so, like if you really are like living your truth, in your joy, following your highest excitement in every moment, Is there ways in your life that you can empower the women around you? So if you already are taking up space in the way that you want, is there ways that you can create more space for the women around you to step fully into your power? And if you're a man listening to this, I fully, fully support and invoke you to create more spaces for women to step into their power that are in your life, women that you care about, women in your community. And I would do this all the time. So... If you don't know me, um, for the last eight years, I've traveled around the world to over 50 countries, organizing uh, retreats, um, launching co-working and co-living spaces, and running communities for digital nomads, people who work remotely around the world. So in that scene, I am very well known, and I organize a lot of events, and I'm just a leader in this community, in this type of world. I have always used that to create events where other women were speaking. So there was many events that I've run and organized where there was only female leader, only female speakers. And I cannot tell you how many times men have come up to me afterwards and said, why are there no men speaking at this event? And what I would say to them is, 
if there was only men speaking at this event, would you come up to me and ask me, where are the women, where are the women speakers? Why are there's no, why are there no women speaking at this event? And they would just be like, uh, and I was like, yeah, like I kind of, in my mind was like, yeah, go away, <laughs> you know? And what I want to say to all of you guys is I want you to start asking this question. If you only see men speaking at an event, I want you to go up to them and ask them, why are there no women speaking at this event? Or can, what can we do to get more women involved in this if they want to be? If you see anything where it's like led only by men, I want you to start asking yourself, even if it's just internally, start shifting the programming and asking yourself, why are there no women leading this? Why are this, why, I mean, it's fine if they don't want to be involved, but what if it's a case, and most of the time it is a case, where they have not been given the opportunity and they have not been invited and they have not or or they've even tried to get into the situation and they have been denied and there's so many situations because I hear everything people talk to me about all these things especially because I'm out there leading things and I hear so many situations where women are like I applied for this job I I wanted to be a speaker here and I was denied I was denied I was denied and you can say, well, maybe the man was more qualified. Maybe this, maybe that. And I will tell you that, yes, maybe that is true. And I will also tell you that there's a very high chance that the woman was not given the chance because of some sort of programming that we have, that men are inherently better leaders, better speakers, more powerful, smarter. And right now, we as women, as a collective, are waking up to the fact that all of this is fucking bullshit. And there is a collective anger that we are all feeling. This can be subconscious or this can be conscious. For me, it has been brewing for many years subconsciously. And I think even recently, it has just started to come very consciously into my body. The reason why for me it's been subconsciously brewing is because I don't want the anger to overwhelm me. And I have a lot of things that I could be angry about. And I've chosen on my timeline to really focus on the joy. Because when you have been so disempowered for most of your life, the, for me at least, and this is how I think, the the best way that I can get back at anyone and also choose to give myself the best life is to not let them not only take away, like, you know, disempower me in the past, but choose mentally to disempower me in the future by having, by me choosing to stay in that anger and to stay in those negative feelings of what happened. I do believe that you need to honor the experience. So... <laughs> It would be, I had a really good mushroom trip last year where the whole thing, the whole, the word that kept coming to me is to, is integration, that we need to not disassociate from the experience that we have had just because we want to have a new experience. So it's not about disassociating myself from the fact that I have been abused and disempowered for so many years. It's about how do I integrate that? into my current experience in a way that is empowering for me in a way that I can learn from and also empower other women around me and men and everyone children all all the things animals <laughs> just create more love and joy and empowerment in the world and connection so how do we bring all of this back into our experience in a way that is empowering for us in a way that we can grow from in a way that we can evolve consciousness these are the things I stay up late at night wondering <laughs> and pondering and making notes about a podcast. So here we go. Um, a, a major thing that um, <laughs> sparked this was yesterday, Faraday, my boyfriend, was sharing with me um, this new song by Crow. I don't know. He's German. If you're German, there's this singer whose name's Crow, and he's this mainstream German rapper that um, that a lot of people like. And he just released a new song yesterday. So Faraday was really excited about showing me the song and like wanting to translate it for me. And he translated part of the song where roughly it was like behind every great man is, a, is an even greater woman. 
and I, what I said to him, I was like, do you know that that's a quote that, th- that comes from a quote in, in America? It's a very mainstream quote that's been around since like the fifties and, um, which is, or even longer, I don't know, but it's just something that I know that has like been around in our culture, which is like, you know, behind every great leader, you'll find uh, like an even greater woman. I got very angry <laughs> when I heard this yesterday because I was like, he was like, wow, this is such a nice song. And I'm like, behind every great man, like behind, like, I am so fucking tired of that being a compliment that behind every great man, there's an even greater woman. I am tired of us standing behind anyone or anything or any man. It is time for us to not stand behind anything anymore. It is time for us to step forward and take up space, all in a way that feels really good in our bodies, but also in a way where it's like, fuck everyone and fuck all of this programming and really just be who we are, which is fucking powerful and amazing and juicy and sexy and sensitive and also brave and smart and, you know, all of the positive things. (laughs) And yeah, it just, it really like, it really like, I'm like, wow, this is 2023 and we're still like, this is supposed to be a compliment. And I, I, I need to like, again, give a little disclaimer that Faraday is amazing. My boyfriend is super empowering. He like in every single way is, is he's like, you're, you're, (laughs) he is always empowering to me. And I just think that this is what, what that sparked in me was not just about him. It was about our whole society and how, this, this is still happening, you know, like this is still our programming that it's okay. And it's a compliment that behind every great man is an even greater woman and that women should be behind, you know, the leadership of men. And so this is when, yeah, this is when I start looking at my own programming and I'm like, wow, even for me, like I have come a very long way. <laughs> Someone wrote in the comments of the YouTube, like on one of my, on one of my podcasts, like, yeah, you've come a long way. I'm like, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> um, and in my journey, I have taken away a lot of, deprogrammed myself in a lot of ways from the programming that I ra- was raised with. And yet I still, when I would get into a partnership, when I would get into a relationship with a man, it was like this final level of like programming that I had where I had to make myself smaller than the man in order for like, this is the programming I had was make yourself smaller in some way, energetically, (laughs) physically, like be smaller, be petite and, and pretty and quiet and, and, you know, make them feel that they're smarter than you and they can, because this is what it, because the programming was like, this is what a man wants in order to feel better and feel good and powerful. And I was like, fuck that. But then I had to really look at that because I was like, this is my, I had to take responsibility that this is my programming that I am carrying around. And yes, we have societal reinforcement. We have religious reinforcement, government reinforcement of this programming. But when I started dating Faraday, who is this just bundle of joy that like doesn't have that much trauma and just really wants to take care of me and love me and have this beautiful life together and was it and wasn't raised his dad died when he was little so he didn't have his mom took care of him is super smart and you know took care of him and his his brother and sister and like is very capable and competent and so he was raised by a powerful woman and like so he's like very comfortable being around powerful women and like encouraging of it. And like, and then I had to look at myself. I'm like, why do I still have, why, why am I still following this programming in a situation where it is not called for and it's not reinforced? And that's when I had to really own up to what I had been raised with. Um, sorry, I'm just changing some of my notes I guess I'll just say this in the order of my notes <laughs> I always write down notes and they're always like so <laughs> flowy and feminine in the sense that they're not linear I'm just like <laughs> so 
what I want to say next is very important for all of you guys to step into your power fully. And this is follow what feels good in every moment. Like follow. You. So there's, there's, there's something that I say a lot about like following your highest excitement, following your joy. This is something from someone who's channeling. His name is Bashar. There's a really great Spotify uh, thing called uh, Higher Mind. I highly recommend listening to that. So type in Higher Mind on Spotify. It's by someone named Bashar, who's an alien, channeling stuff. And he always talks about in order to break free of all your programming and really become your authentic self, you need to follow your whatever feels the best in your body in every given moment. People really try to complicate this. And I think especially as women, we have gotten like disconnected from our bodies. And this is our, this is our superpower as women to like really feel everything. Like we feel things so deeply and so beautifully. And we try and get in our heads and like rationalize things. And so I want to really break it down for you to let all of that go. And following your joy in every single moment is... Like the example that Faraday, my boyfriend, always gives is like, if you're swimming and you want to get out of the sea or the pool, then you just get out. You don't like logically wait for, you know, oh, I should stay in five more minutes because it's good to soak in the sea for 25 minutes a day or, you know, this and that. You just get out. You just do the thing that feels good then. And as women... We have a lot of emotions and it's been programmed into us to not listen to our emotions. Like, what the fuck? Our emotions are our superpower. So I invite you to listen to your emotions at every given moment, whether that feels super fucking crazy and whether that's not rational in your brain and it's not productive, that's great. Still follow them. So... Yesterday, I had this thing where I'll give you an example for me. Like yesterday, I was like really excited. I wanted to record a podcast. I was like, duh, 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 duh. I'm like getting up. I'm doing my morning routine. And then we went and got acupuncture. And acupuncture is amazing. Just putting that out there. If you don't know what it is, it's Chinese medicine where they stick these little needles in you, but like on very specific points. And the lady interviews you and like checks out your whole body. I feel like she's a witch. She understands things. <laughs> more than she's saying and then she like kind of like aligns your energies and your body so after that I had a lot of feelings that came up like it was like detoxing detoxes your physical body your energetic body and everything and I kept checking in throughout the rest of the day I was like do I want to make a podcast now and it kept being like no no I just want to lay here I just want to like sleep I just want to watch a movie and then I I was like okay, I'm going to honor this, you know, and I just like at every given moment and whether I start something or not, like I had bought, I had bought uh, tickets to go to a dance last, last night and Farid and I went to go get a massage and then we were like sitting on the beach and he was just like, how do you feel in your body? And like, do you want to, what do you want to do now? And I was like really feeling into it. And I'm like, oh, I, it would feel nice to like wear this cute outfit to the dance tonight. And he's like, but how do you really feel in your body right now? Like, are you sure you want to go to the dance tonight? And I was like, and then I had to check in and I was like, Oh wow. My logical brain was like, I bought these tickets. My friends are going, I want to go be with them. And I was like, you're totally right. And I like felt it in my body. I'm like, like my body just wants to go home, like curl up in a ball and cuddle and like watch a movie and order takeaway. And he was like, I knew it because <laughs> sometimes he he's getting so good at, at reading me and like channeling my body that he can start feeling my body and feeling into it. And that's so beautiful to have partner and we do it for each other, but to have a partner who can like really feel into you and help you honor your body. And I was like, yeah, I really want to just like go be cozy. And I could have rationally gotten upset, like my rational brain, I could have allowed it to beat me up inside and be like, ah, oh, you weren't per- quote unquote productive today. And da, da, da. did I do that? No, I really honored my body in every single moment. And I didn't ask myself, well, why, why didn't I do this thing? Why didn't, because a lot of us, I think when it comes to following our joy and following what feels good in every moment, we, 
So I'll give you a piece of advice. In order to do this in a way that it actually works is to do it alone first because we also have so much programming around group mentality of wanting to make sure that everyone else, either everyone else is okay, everyone else approves of us, or like, you know, we're in the flow of what the group's doing. Fuck that. So I invite you to be on your own for a day and to really follow what your body is saying. And then... Hi. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah? What? Sorry for the interruption. So, yeah, follow your body in every single moment without allowing your rational mind to get involved. This is an opportunity for you to merge your inner child. I like to call it my inner child, which is my inner self just wanting to be a little kid and following my joy with my loving, inner loving parent, which is what we can turn our rational mind into because our ego, our rational mind is trying to protect us and take us on the journey that feels good for us in the long run. But sometimes we want to make sure that that inner loving parent is guiding us with love instead of fear. So if you feel like it's guiding you with anxiety instead of joy, then this is when you can follow your inner child a little bit more and let that lead the way and then merge them eventually. So when I share about my timeline, a lot of people are like, what the fuck? You have gone through so much. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, I don't let that define me. You know, I'm not going to sit here. What I always say is that I do not want to spend the rest of my life, my rest of my adulthood trying to get over my childhood. I do not agree when people say they need to be healing their whole lives. I'm here to tell you that I have gotten to a certain point in my healing journey where I feel foundationally things are healed and I am living in my joy. And of course, there's more programming, more things to uncover. This is the discovery. This is the beautiful journey of being alive and growing our consciousness. It can happen in a way that feels good in our bodies and that is with joy. It can be led with joy instead of I need to grow and so I need to heal this trauma and let's find another trauma. Let's really, you know, stew on this for a while. It's like, no, I want to, I want to enjoy the journey. I want to, I want to be like, wow, this is so cool what we're learning and this is exciting and da, da, da. Yeah, so I want to also be a leader in that and sharing with you a different, a different way to do this, that you can heal yourself and that there is the, I am a example of someone who has gone through a lot and come out the other side to tell you that I'm living my life in joy and I feel very grounded in my body, grounded in my timeline and receiving of all the pleasure and amazing abundance and that this is something that you also can have if you choose it and if you want it for and part of this um that I realized is that for me I spent most of my the way that I got so people are like how do you get from that point to that point and I will tell you that I want to just share from my journey that I went in a way where I went from one extreme to the other because I wanted to prove to myself that I could do things on my own. And I don't think everyone has to go this extreme. (laughs) I want to share my experience so that you can learn from it and and don't have to necessarily go all that that way. Um, That you can do it in a way that feels better (laughs) because it didn't feel so great for me sometimes on my timeline. Um, but when you're raised, so for me, raised in, in an environment where my programming was to be controlled, I, I, I realized from a very early age that the environment that I was in, that asking for help equaled being controlled. So it was like a sign of weakness to ask for help. And it meant an opportunity for my dad, for my religion, to control me and so from a very young age I got very quiet on the inside of what was happening in my reality and the only person that really knew what was going on all the way was my journal and then sometimes my best friend Christina who I've known since I was 10 
Um, so if you haven't heard any of my previous podcasts, I was raised by a father who was very controlling and abusive and also raised in a religion called Jehovah's Witness, which is what I would consider a cult. Um, and with my dad, the way that he was controlling was he was controlling of our bodies. So I, I am the second child of two sisters. So my older sister is two years older than me and my younger sister is two years younger than me. And then my mom. My mom is very, very deep in her feminine. I grew up with her always painting and baking and um, reading books to us at night and just very artistic, taking photos. Like her first job was working in a photo lab in Portland, Oregon, where she's like a hipster. And my mom's just like this cool artist mom. And she's very beautiful, like blonde hair, blue eyes, just like perfect in every way. And because we didn't have any boys in our family, my dad raised us as if we were boys, but then controlled us as if we were girls. So we, he would take us fishing with him. And I remember hating it because I loved being out in nature. And of course it was fun to connect with my dad and my sisters, but he would also make us like gut the fish where we had to take out the insides of the fish when we got home. And I would just cry and cry and cry because I was like, why do we have to kill these things? And I don't want to look at the blood and like pull the things out of it and all these things. And then my dad also eventually owned a construction company. So I was raised like during the summer, like helping him out on construction sites, <laughs> which, you know, I don't know, me bopping around <laughs> meant usually like me helping him like get things, but dancing most of the time. And eventually he didn't let me come to the job sites because I was in his mind too distracting for the men there. Um, but then on the other hand, very controlling of our bodies. Like I remember when I would leave the house, like my dad would literally have me bend over in front of him, like physically to see if I had any cleavage showing, if my boobs were showing. And he would decide if like what I wore was appropriate to go outside. So like this was, and it was so humiliating for me and felt so gross in my body when he would have me do this. And this was just a normal thing in my house. And my mom was just like, my mom just like just put up with it like all the things my dad did my mom just was like well it's just your father honey and like you know like kind of like this like woman who felt like we didn't have any power yeah like we didn't have any power and she just had to deal with it and and then even like in school my my dad had my younger sister um who the way she handled those things in my house was basically to become like very like my dad. She was very in her masculine and he would have her follow me around school and report back to him if I talked to any boys because I wasn't allowed to talk to boys and report back like who I hung out with. So like my actions were controlled. What I wore was controlled. And then he even tried to control our brains where like he wanted, he wanted us to not only think the way he thought, he wanted us to feel what he thought. He wanted us to believe that we couldn't do things on our own. And he would tell me, like, if I went out in the world on my own, that I would just fail. Like, if I wouldn't basically in trying to program me that I couldn't, I wasn't competent to take care of myself out in the world. And he didn't teach me how to, how to live in the world. Like, he wouldn't let me get an outside job. Like, I remember wanting to get a job during the summer. And I think intuitively it was because I wanted to start learning how the world worked. And when I would get home from school, my dad wouldn't even let us like leave the house. Like we had a property where we had a backyard we could go in our backyard, but we weren't allowed to like walk around our neighborhood or like go hang out with our friends. And it was just like prison. Like I, and then, so what I would do is I would just read like one of the few things that we were allowed to do was read anything from the library. And so I would just read whatever I could get my hands on. Cause I was trying, I think intuitively to learn how the world worked and I would sleep. I would just sleep a lot. And now looking back, like considering what happens after where I traveled for almost 10 years, nonstop. Um, and I'm kind of glad that I had a lot of years where I was able to read and write and reflect and sleep. But at the time, those years felt so terrible because I really felt like I was in prison. Um, but I, I wouldn't let him program me like, my dad hated me in many ways because I was one of the only, I was the only one in my immediate family out of my sisters and my mom that wouldn't let him control me mentally, physically, 
I would let him control me physically in the sense that like I obeyed what he told me to do, but like I was my own person in my head, in the way I dressed and in the way that I carried myself in the world. And he could feel this and he tried everything he could to break me and to have me feel like I wasn't powerful. And it just made me more and more stubborn. <laughs> um, and then in the way that he controlled money, like my, he never wanted my mom to work, even though my mom is like super smart in her own way. Like she, not in her own way, she is smart. <laughs> and what I mean by in her own way was like my mom never really cared about money. Like she, she just wanted to make beautiful things in the world. And so I remember one of the times that she, she was a really good, she, I say was, cause my mom is not in my life anymore. So I speak of her as if it's a different timeline because for me it is, you know, and she loved baking and she had recipes from like my great grandparents and like everyone in our church, like loved my mom's food. And so, and she wanted to make beautiful things in the world. So I remember her telling my dad, like, I want to I want to go get a job. And he was like, we don't need you working. You just stay home and da, da, da. And then finally she was just like, no, I'm going to get a job. And then he made her give him her paycheck every time she got paid. So she was not allowed in my fam in my house to have her own money. She could put her money in the joint bank account or give it to my dad. And he got to decide what happened to it. But she was not allowed to have her. Can you imagine like, and what I want to say is that this is actually not that uncommon in the world. Like for my generation and younger, this might sound like such bullshit, but like this is actually a thing that happens in the world on the day to day very normally. And it's somehow programmed into us that if women have control of money, all we will do is spend it on shoes and clothes and that we somehow cannot take care of ourselves. And I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, so I just want to share with you that that is um that is how I was raised in that is just my dad. So like when people talk about like, "Oh wow, you're raised in a cult." And I was like, "Yes, there is a situation of this religious cult that I was raised in, but then there's the whole situation with my father, which is like amplified it to the max because I haven't even spoken about my religion yet." Um and the reason why I was saying before about my, my, my parents not speaking is because I left my religion and my family because of the programming in the religion have chosen to separate themselves from my life. So they will not speak to me because I'm not one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And that's the only reason. Imagine that. That's my timeline. Um, but I know, I even knew intuitively when I was little and all this stuff was happening with my dad that he did this because he, he got a sense of worth from feeling powerful over us and trying to make us feel like we were weak. So he wanted me to feel separated from my connection to my higher self and my connection to source energy. And he wanted me to feel that connection only through him. So he wanted me to have him be my source, my higher self and my source connection. And I knew from a very young age that one, having that happen didn't feel good in my body. And so I was like, there's got to be a different way. I'm going to figure this out. I don't know. Anything is better than this. This feels very bad in my body and very disempowering. And so I left, like, I kind of just checked out, like, from when I was, like, I just remember from when I had my first conscious thought, you know, like, when I was, like, like, nine or ten, and I started reading, like, things that were bigger than bigger than bigger than my world and realizing that there's a whole world out there and a whole universe and multiverse and then realizing that everything that my dad had tried to program into me was bullshit and I spoke up to him and that didn't go so well <laughs> and uh and so I a lot of times would be very quiet around him and that would make him feel even more <laughs> uncomfortable because I would just look at him. Imagine this little awake child, me just looking at him and he would just go crazy. Like he was just like, what are you thinking? Da, 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 da. I know. Da, da, da. And I was just like, look at him. And just like the more quiet I got and the more I would just look at him, the more angry he got because he could feel the realization that I understood everything 
and that I was not falling for any of this bullshit. And I knew that I had to wait out my time before I could be free. But I knew the moment I was able to be free, I would leave. And he knew this too. And I know that at the end of the day, all he really wanted was to love me. And he had his programming of what he thought love was. And he tried to love me (coughs) in the way that he was taught love, which is really fucked up because my grandparents raised him really fucked up. (laughs) And, you know, when I see him now, like energetically, I like feel him and he's just like this broken person that is trying his best to make himself feel powerful in the world because that's what he feels like is what love means. And so I just send him love energetically and I separate from love. This is something I learned in therapy that is very amazing. It's called separating with love. You can love your family and also honor the fact that they are unhealthy and they are trying to program you with things that do not feel good in your body. And you can separate from all of those things and still love them and still honor that they are your blood family. And then you can go out and choose your chosen family, your soul family, the family that feel really good in your body and honor and support the programming that you want to have in your life, that you are empowered and you are worthy of love and you are able to unfold into your full authentic self. And both of those things can be true and valid. So one thing I will say about my parents is that I had dual dual programming. I had opposite programming in me. So this is why I come on a very interesting perspective on all of these things, because my mom, through her energy, showed me what felt good in my body about she really felt she really felt into her body all the time and did her best to honor what her body was feeling. She was always trying to bring beautiful things into the world and joy and creative expression and connection. She was always connecting us to ourselves and our higher selves. And she always told me, she programmed into me that I was worthy of love. She told me every single day, you are so love. I love you so much, Brittany. You can do anything, anything you put your heart and mind to, you can do. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of the women that you're becoming And she would tell me, you're so beautiful to the point where I was like, mom, I don't believe you. I think all moms are supposed to tell their kids that they're beautiful. And then I realized later on, not all moms do this. Not all moms program their kids that they're beautiful and worthy and smart. She would always tell me like, Brittany, you are so smart. Like literally anything you put your mind to, you can do. And so I'm very grateful to my mom that she put this into me. And at the same time, I also honor the fact that she didn't feel strong enough to actually be and embody that full power in herself all the way but she gave that to me and I actually had a therapist tell me that maybe she subconsciously did whatever she could to get me out of the religion and out of the cold and out of the situation with my dad because she didn't feel strong enough to do that for herself but she wanted to make sure that we could get out and I feel that that's true And I really honor that. And at the same time, I've cried a lot about it because, of course, I would love for my mom to be here. And I would I still have like visions and dreams of me picking her up at the pier here on Copanyang and showing her this beautiful life that I've built here and this really amazing community that I've gathered and and Faraday, my boyfriend and Afro, my dog and like taking her to waterfalls and (sighs) just sharing all the love with her. And I still hold that in a in a vision that will come true in the future. And I'm grateful that their timelines can shift at every single moment um another thing i want to share is how religion controls women so again i came from a very extreme version of this um where from the jehovah's witness platform um like from church every single week it was preached that that men are the head of the household that men are the head of the congregation the church of each family so if you're married or you have a father in the religion like they decide they have the last say on everything women are not allowed to teach from the front of the con- they're not allowed to teach to to the church to the congregation and like they they preach that women can voice their opinions but men have the final say and this is such subtle programming and not so subtle programming 
that was layered throughout the whole religion that basically men are smarter than women and that men are the leaders and that they should be the leaders in everything and women should just submit to that. Um, so how this played out in my timeline was, you know, my dad would use this whenever he wanted to be like, and my mom would be like, you're being abusive or, or like, this is not right. And my dad would be like, I'm the head of the house. I get it. He would use the religion whenever it felt um, good in his favor <laughs> and program that programming over my mother to make it so that he was in complete control of us. Um, and then when I got married, I was married at 18 for six years to someone who was also a Jehovah's Witness. My, like, my husband was the one who had to make the final decision and whenever the men who ran the church, it was all men, men run this whole religion, um, whenever they wanted to, quote unquote, they called it giving counsel. So whenever they wanted to tell me something that they didn't like about me, the way that the, the church works is they would tell it to my husband and then he would give me the counsel. And they were always telling him that I spoke up too much, that my clothes were too revealing, they weren't modest enough. And basically trying to control my voice and my body. Don't even get me started on the sexual harassment and sexual assault that happens within the religion. Because that is a whole thing. And it has come out very much about Jehovah's Witnesses and how much sexual assault. And when you have men leading things. And within the Bible, they quote this scripture where if someone is reporting sexual abuse, they have to have two witnesses. So imagine a woman getting raped and you go and tell the church leaders, oh, I this happened to me. And they're like, well, did you have two witnesses? And then the way that they deal with it is they don't go to the police. They set you down with the person who abused you and raped you. And they have a meeting between you, this person, and two men in, that lead the church. And then you're supposed to speak what happened in front of the person who assaulted you to other men that it happened to. And there's been cases all over the world where... Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses church had to pay out t millions and millions of dollars in um, like retribution f to victims of abuse because we were so programmed to go and talk, tell our, instead of going to the police, we were programmed to go tell our church leaders what happened. And instead of going to the police and, and getting these abusers um, the help they needed or the, the accountability they should have had, the church leaders did not go to the police and there was like thousands and thousands and thousands of cases of this because it would look bad on the religion if a Jehovah's Witness man was abusing women in the church and so they just wouldn't go to the police and then they wouldn't it wouldn't get handled it wouldn't and then those that perpetrator would keep abusing people this is the environment I grew up in imagine it, it was great no it wasn't it was terrible and one last thing I'll say about the way I was raised is like even from little I, I was very vocal when I would see things that were happening and the things that I didn't feel good in my body I would speak up and I remember going and talking to the head of my they call it congregations like the, the local church that I went to and he was this white man in his 70s and I telling him that my dad was beating me and hitting me and being abusive and him quoting me the scripture about it's some scripture that's like the the like the good child was raised by the rod which means like you can beat your kids and him telling me well you know my dad beat me and I turned out okay and that was that was me reporting abuse that was the response that I got and I remember being like 10 and I remember looking at him and thinking this is such bullshit but okay I'm playing this game so this is the game that I'm in and how do I deal with this and I was in full survival mode for all of my childhood, even until, even until when I got married, even the decision to get married, it wasn't pushed on me. It wasn't an arranged marriage, but it was the only way that I knew how to be in the world because I was not given the support to take care of myself in the outside world. I wasn't able to work. I wasn't able to be exposed to the outside world. And so the logical next step is get married because then at least I could be outside of my parents house and and then and have some sort of freedom but then you're locked into a marriage and in in the religion 
if you want to get divorced, they excommunicate you. It is against the religion to get divorced. They don't have this as a complete law, but they will, they will do whatever they can to kick you out if you, if you get divorced. And this is what happened to me. Um, so then imagine again, if you get married and you don't want to be married anymore, you're in prison. Like you are not allowed to leave. And the way that they control you is that you will lose your connection to everything that you know, your community. Um, and a lot of them have the way that they are, their work and everyone, they, they all like hire each other for jobs. And so like your whole living, your whole life, your whole community, your whole family, everything is completely controlled. So that is where I came from. And I think because of this, I went on the other extreme where I went into law and um, I worked in a law firm and I got to the point where I was training all the new people who got hired, all the men who got hired. I was the one training them. I was second only to the head of, of the person who owned the law firm. So I like... I went out in the world and then I eventually I worked and lived in New York City. My my office was across the street from Grand Central Station. So I went and I was like, fuck you. I'm going to go and be very successful in this world. But beca- <laughs> because of who I am, I also realized that being in the world in the matrix was not the program. That, when you have been so programmed from such an early age and you're awake to this, you start looking at all the programming around you. So I didn't want to just get away from the programming or break free from the programming of my dad and my religion. I also want to break free from the programming of society. And because I had been so programmed and controlled as from a very young age, I went through, I went basically to the highest that I could and within my timeline of my society and a very successful high paying job in New York City, which most people, it's like, this is the top of the top, you know? And I was like, this is it. <laughs> Like I wasn't happy and I tried to shut down my sensitivity and be more in my masculine and just be like, oh, money and, uh, you know, the city is so loud, but I'm going to get up and get on the train for an hour each way every day and just like grind, you know, and then I proved to myself that I could take care of myself. And, you know, most women, they go through this world and they their timelines and they're not sure if they really can take care of themselves on their own if you're listening to this and you're a woman and you're in this situation i really invite you to get to a place in your life in a way that feels good in your body where you know that completely on your own you can take care of yourself you do not need a man in your life you don't need your family you don't need to rely on anyone you, but this is where I was realizing that there is codependence, which is when you depend on someone in a way where it's unhealthy, like without them, you cannot be good in yourself. And then there's something called interdependence. This is a term they made up in therapy. I really enjoy it because there is such an extreme of control and programming we have in the world that a lot of times I feel like we go all the way to the other extreme where they're like, and this is what I did. I was like, I don't want to rely on anyone. I want to be able to take care of myself on my own. And I did it. And then I realized that it's really nice to ask for help. And you, I can ask for help and be interdependent in a way where it's like, I can take care of myself. And yes, I will enjoy receiving help in a way that feels good in my body and let go of the programming that receiving help means I am going to be controlled and understand that receiving help means that I'm loved and I'm worthy of love and people want to show up for me in a way that is empowering for me. So I just want to re-emphasize this, that when someone doesn't have their connection to source energy, they fake it by dominating others and feeling power over them. And so I felt this with my dad and my religion very strongly. I call it energy vampires. And and you can feel that like when someone is trying to make you feel disempowered and you feel smaller around them, they are literally sucking your energy and you get to choose. You have the choice I, that me in this podcast is waking you up to the fact that you have a choice whether you want that to continue. So if anyone in any way in your life, your religion, your job, your partner, your friend group your society, anything is making you feel smaller and making you feel frozen and making you feel unsafe in your body. 
they are sucking your energy around away from you because all of us have the opportunity to be connected to source energy. All of us have the opportunity to be fully in our power and fully big and taking up space in our lives. And if you feel like you can't, that's usually because you're, you're choosing subconsciously or consciously to give up your power to someone else and they are taking that energy. And you can also look at your religion or society or any programming you have and ask yourself, is this based on love? Does this feel empowering in my body when I receive this message, this programming? Or, and, okay, and does this connect me to myself more, to the people I love, to the earth? That's when you know that it is good for you. That's healthy. So again, I want to say this. Is this based on love? Does this feel empowering for me? Does this make me feel more connected to myself and my higher self and to the people I love in my life and to the earth? This is the direction we want to go. What we currently have in the world is teachings based on fear that are disempowering, that are separating us from our source connection and from each other. This is what the world is based on right now, and this is what we are waking up to, and this is what we are moving away from. So again, we want to move to some, to programming. Everything's programming. Programming is the mental construct that we are choosing to live in as these personalities and these 3D bodies. It's like we're playing the video game and there's certain rules in the game in order for you to have a game. Otherwise, everything can happen and nothing matters and nothing makes sense. So we are signing up by having these 3D bodies to play the game, but we get to choose which game we have and which rules we want to play by, which quote unquote limitations that help it build the game and make it so that it actually works. So I am telling you that you can choose to have a timeline and a reality that is based on love and where in every moment you feel empowered and in every moment you are connected to yourself, your body and your higher self. You get to choose that. Whew, I just want to take a deep breath. That's a lot. Um, And then I look at myself and I'm like, you know, I've lived my whole, at first I wrote down in my notes, I'm like, I've lived my whole adult life outside of the game. And then I wrote down, I was like, or maybe in reaction to the game that is currently being played and the programming. And this is true. Like, I know that I'm here on this timeline to create the new, to create the new earth, to be a leader in it, and to wake everyone up in a way that feels really yummy in their bodies. And also I have to really be honest with myself is like, am I, am I falling into the programming? Like, am I choosing, am I actively and consciously choosing my own programming or am I like, okay, let me just say it this way. The worst thing that could happen is that for me on my timeline is for me to react to the fear that I was raised in by creating more fear over here in my current timeline and or react like I don't want that and so I go the other extreme both of these things all of these things I have to check in is like is this really helping me be connected to myself and to my source energy and this is when you can let go of all of the programming and be like I'm just going to follow what feels good in every single moment so if you're a little overwhelmed by everything I said just know just let it sink in and know that all you need to do in order to follow and like make sure you're on the right program that you want to be on and in the right timeline you want to be on that feels empowering is to really follow your body and what your body wants in every single moment. And a great way to honor this is if you're in a group of people and you need to leave, just say, my body is saying I need to go right now. And like, and like just fuck the rational mind and do not have to make up a rational logical reason for you to do anything and just allow yourself and your higher self to guide you on the path that will bring you the biggest joy and so for me i feel that it's time to for all of us to claim our inner power and find out our inner softness as well And to figure out how to take up space in a soft way or in a loud way, in whatever way feels authentic in our bodies. 
So I'm not saying that someone shouting from the rooftops is bad. I'm just saying that I want to create a different option that as women, we can be gentle and, and that is powerful and we can be soft and feminine and that is powerful and we can be smart and loud and that is powerful all of it is true but figure out what is authentic for each of us and for me I refuse to shout in order to be heard I'm here I'm speaking my truth I'm deep in my joy and I'm heard and I know this because all of you guys are listening and synchronistically more and more people are finding my podcast every single week. And it's so beautiful because I'm being my authentic self and people are listening and it's empowering for them and it's making an impact in the world. And that is what we're here for. So I invite you to follow whatever intuitively pulls you in every single moment to helps you bring your biggest joy in your life and to really listen to your feelings that are based on love and to speak your truth and allow yourself to be heard because like I said in the beginning of this podcast I am tired of there not being more women leaders in the world so I invite you men women aliens dogs cats everyone to really feel into this let it settle in your body and to create more spaces for women to speak around you and to really listen to them and listen to their truth and to create more safe spaces for all of us because it is not about desensitizing ourselves to live in this world. It's not about becoming less sensitive. It's about creating more safe spaces for us to feel safe, to be sensitive and to really listen and feel into our feelings. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope that this sparks something in you. I hope that this is empowering for you. And please know that you are loved by me and the universe and all that is and everything around you. And that there's this beautiful bundle of golden energy that's going through your body at all times from source. And please, I invite you to look for the magic, look for the synchronicity, look for all of the beautiful things that are unfolding in your life right now in this moment. And the more that you focus on those and the more that you follow what feels good in your body, the more everything will work out perfectly. Okay. Love you. Bye.